Hello, my friends, and welcome back to our continuing blind let's play Ace Attorney Dual Destinies, the seventh game in the Ace Attorney series. My name is the Fightless Briar. This is your Sword Base Gaming channel, and today, today, we know who killed the Alderman. Now we just got to get him to admit it. We gotta break him down. But he's being very stubborn and very tricky. So, can we do it? Of course we can. Let's get to it. I hope you're all having a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day today. We've got you now. We know you killed the Alderman. Now admit it. I, 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 oh, oh. Silence. Yeah, I knew this trial was far from over. Enough of your silly games, Justice Dono. This prancing peacock could not possibly be the killer. Objection! What are you talking about? His alibi has already crumbled to dust. And I just proved that he was in the fox chamber while it was still locked tight. Silence. Why could he have not seen the statue in its true form before the murder? After all, he was close friends with the alderman. Ergo. Yes, th that's right. I clearly remember it now. Adam McCurvey told me about it. Uh, about the statue, actually. Uh, what did it actually look like? I mean, he was a good friend of mine. <laughs> yeah, right. He wanted to show you a secret gift just like that. Silence. Moreover, it has already been proven that he was not present at the scene of the crime. It has? Forgotten, have we? Recall the little scamp statement, if you will. When Jixi Tema unlocked the fox chamber, she saw the Alderman and the mayor collapse therein, and no one else. Oh! Dang it! The fact is, it was you two who made that apparent in yesterday's court decision. The slurs for the bell could not possibly have been in that locked room. No! Ag! We can't let the crown prince get off this easily. I just don't get it. How could Jigsy not have seen the bell? The proof is incontrovertible. There's no room for it to be to exist. Am I not right? Your baldness. Hmm, it does seem lovely conclusive. Yes, it does. Mm, uh, the facts point to the defendant and victim being the only people in that locked room. Moreover, the defendant has already confessed. Objection! Silence. Wow, an objection followed by an immediate silence. We didn't get a chance to object. <laughs> you cannot defend the indefensible. Your role in this charade is over, Justice Dono. But, but, but. Your baldness. This trial will last an eternity if we were to keep crossing brains with these simpletons. It's high time you brought down the hammer of justice. Hmm, a point well made. I believe it's time to clear a verdict. This court finds the defendant, Damien Timia. Finally. I was hoping someone would speak up. Who was it? Was it Phoenix? No, it was Damien himself. Or Damien sort of himself. I'm not really sure. C -c 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 it would seem that my time is a ton. My mayor Timma? Consular, there is a matter to which I must testify. I recall it now, only for your good graces. Uh, counselor? All right, he must be me. Has he finally remembered what happened before that blow to his head? Bailiff, don't just stand there. Seize him. 
It's so good. I can't restrain him. Ka, 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 ka. No me and despair. For I am Timma Taro, the Lord of the Yokai. But Mr. Justice, please do something. Uh, since when am I responsible for court security? Apollo, this is our chance. We might get some new information out of him. Your Honor, seeing as our client has something new to say. I believe due process demands that we hear him out, even if he is a... Yokai, I guess. Hmm, when you put it that way. Uh, still, I believe testimony by Yokai is unprecedented in the legal world. So we had a parrot. Do I keep having to go back to this, Your Honor? Huh. Unprecedented in, in absurdity, more like. All right then, Mr. Damien Timmo. Should I say Mr. Damien, uh, I mean, uh, Tenma Taro. Your testimony, if you would, please. I shall now speak of recollections most real, courtesy of my host, Tenmin Tenma. Hear these words, mortals, for ye hear them if but once you shall. Ka, 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 ka. What is testimony? The ruler of demon kind. Really conscious was Damien there amid the darkness. Suddenly, two yokai did appear. On one side, I, Tenma Taro, the ruler of demon kind. And on the other, my mortal enemy, the nine-tailed fox. Um... Um... Uh... Um, so, uh, this is the defendant saying that the room he was in was very dark at the time? Hmm, as strange as it may be, yes, indeed, all was in darkness. And the part about Tenma Taro and the Ninetale Fox being there? Yes, that too. Tenma Taro towered overhead, and the Ninetailed Fox glittered go. Ah! Uh, <laughs> Call animal abuse, your honor! Heh. <laughs> it would seem the defendant's recollections are not to be trusted. Yes, well, truth be too. My host recollections are still a bit fuzzy. As if half dreamt that happening lingers in his mind. Apollo, maybe I can help here. Really? Oh, you mean with the, uh... Yeah, I can hear it. The discord in his heart. I sense an unusual emotion in the mirror's memory of the event. Okay, I just hope our findings don't come back to haunt us again. Okay, and this time we know too that it's not just about it being a big pulse. It can be a small pulse too. Barely a conscious was Damien there amid the dark. I'm gonna read this as normal so I can try to try to look through this. Okay, so he's sad that Damien was suddenly to Akai did appear. Shocked about that, still sad about Damien. On one side, I Damien uh, Temar Tower, the role of Demon Kind. And on the other, my mortal enemy, the Nine-Tailed Fox. Okay, he seems to be happy that his mortal enemy is here. Why would you be happy that your mortal enemy is here? That doesn't make sense. Why would you be happy that your enemy is here? I guess maybe to uh, further your rivalry, but if he's your mortal enemy, you want to be happy. It sounds like the mayor saw the same thing as what's shown on that skull. So the, the size of pulse doesn't seem to matter here. What matters is I see an emotion that probably shouldn't be there. What's with those Tenmas in the Yokai vision? I think it's sweet how father and daughter could share something like that. I don't think a shared nightmare really qualifies as sweet. 
Anyway, all I need to do is point out an unnatural reaction like last time. Right, the club places where an emotion conflicts with the testimony. That conflict usually indicates a thought or emotion that is being suppressed. Well, like I said, I do not understand why a mortal enemy would exhibit happiness. I mean, this seems easier than the others. Like the other one with the, the pulse not being as bright, that seemed complicated. This one, very straightforward. If this is right. All right, good. Okay, that was that was a lot more straightforward, as I said. When the nine-tailed fox appeared, you not only experienced shock and sadness, but also something like joy as well. Joy. Hmm. Perhaps it was joy at the light coming to my eyes at long last. A long and terrible creaking did pierce the silence, and then there was light. On reflection, it was a door that did produce that infernal racket. A creaking door? Oh, you must be talking about the forbidden chamber door. It does make a lot of noise. So this means the forbidden chamber really was opened. But what about the sudden light that he described? I think I know. He mentioned darkness and Temratar towering overhead. Maybe the mayor wasn't really in the fox chamber at the time of the crime. Mr. Mayor, did the darkness that you were in happen to be here? Um... Where was the mayor during the murder? The, the fox chamber, right? Take that! Mayor Tema, the darkness you were in was right here. Hmm. You claim I was there. Oh, that should have been the forbidden chamber. Shouldn't it have. That should have been the Forbidden Chamber. My bad, I messed up on that one. No such a collection do I possess. Well, that's just because your memory is still hazy. Hmm. On further reflection, I believe that. You are gravely misguided. Huh? You mean you got that one wrong, Apollo? Counselor, I expect attempts of a more serious nature from you. All right, uh, let's take that one over again. Yeah, I, I, it's, it's the Forbidden Chamber, isn't it? The Forbidden Chamber. Was it not the Fox Chamber where the murder did occur? Yes, but it all makes sense if you were in the Forbidden Chamber. Yeah. That terrible cricket sound was probably the Forbidden Chamber's door opening. And the towering timber tower you saw, most likely the Forbidden Chamber statue. Why, yes, that would explain it. The darkness and the staff and the demon's grasp. But even if that's all true, then what about the night at Fox? Uh, maybe we're seeing things, just like Jinxie and her imaginary yokai? Fantastic, Horapolo. It's entirely possible. In a gaggy dreamlike state, people can misremember things and events. Misremember, you say? Hmm. Let me think. Ah, uh, I do believe I remember now. That, that was not the nine-tailed fox. It was... The amazing nine tails. What? The, the amazing nine tails? At first, this is but a dream, I thought. Now, however, most clearly do I recall it. It was the amazing nine tails who did open the forbidden chamber's door. Well, we know that's possible, right? Because after all, uh, the guy who was killed was the amazing nine tails. Oh, the dots. I'm sorry I asked. The amazing nine tails, but that was the victim, Adam McKibby, right? Yeah, but why would he open the forbidden chamber? Wasn't he trying to keep it sealed? Oh, that's a good point. Why would he always try to open it? I, didn't, I totally missed that. Never mind that, this is completely no information. Let me enter it and run an update. Barely conscious was Damon there in a forbidden chamber. Info update. Amid the darkness, a mighty statue of Temmatar loomed overhead. Would that be a shock? Why is he sad about seeing the statue? Why would this statue um, elicit a sadness response? 
Something did oil up in a shaft of light did pierce the gloom. Okay, seeing light would probably give a um would probably give a a happiness response. You know, you see the light. Okay, we got an info update here as well. Oh, look at that picture. The amazing nine tails had come to the rescue. So much going on here. Okay, so he's happy that he's being rescued. He's shocked that he's being rescued. But he's sad that it's his arch enemy that rescued him. I mean, I could make sense of that. We know the answer either is probably this one or this one, right? So he could be sad here. Because if he wasn't Tenma Taro. Hmm. I'm going to start with the sadness here. And if it's not here, I'm going to jump to the four statement. Because I don't, because I expect to see shock here. You're shocked to see this giant statue. But why are you sad? I'm going to go with this to start. Oh, wait. Yeah, come point. The unexpected wish it is, right? He okay, that's not it then. Really? You sure about that? Yeah, can't you see it? Maybe if you look really hard? Just keep staring and maybe you... Apollo, this is a game of where's emo? <laughs> so I'm way off. At least make an effort next time. Okay, okay, let me try it again. I am making an effort, okay? Don't, don't, don't you dare take that tone with me. He's shocked to see the amazing nine tails. He's sad because his arch enemy is rescuing him. And he's happy because he's being rescued. Let me go with the sadness first. Got it. Okay, that's it. When the amazing nine tails open the chamber, banish the darkness within. You felt joy? But did you also feel shock and sadness? Hmm. Yes. In the hazy depths of my mind, I do recollect something of that nature. I believe it was the fiend's cape of red. For when I did behold it, a great wave of sadness did unexpectedly watch over me. Got one more to go. A cape of red? What does that mean, a cape of red? Apollo, we've reduced the noise level. Oh, but there's still a little left. Great. Mayor Temo, why were you sad when you saw the red cape? Hmm. Why indeed? What could this mean? I guess his memory is still a little spotty. I know because his latest recollection contradicts the evidence. Yeah, it's one of those contradictions that slaps you right across the face. Hmm. Uh, something this obvious could advise. When someone is trying to force a fuzzy memory into a definitive shape... Apollo, I know what you have to do. You need to present evidence that contradicts the image that you see. Oh, so it's basically the same as the usual cross-examine. Uh, okay, time to review the evidence. Look at contradiction. Here comes justice! Okay, so barely conscious. Amidst the darkness, the statue of mighty Tamotaro stood. Send the door open and a light to pierce the room. Oh, we got an info update. The amazing nine tails had come to the rescue. But it updated. Oh, he's got a cape on now. That's different. I need to look at things about his red cape. He doesn't have a red cape on in this picture. Objection! Excellent! That makes that makes a lot of sense. You said the amazing nine tails cape was red. Are you sure about that? Yes, well, I do believe it was a red cape I saw, but... Mayor Tenma. Does this cape look red to you? 
Oh, that certainly does not look red. Neither did Scarlet or Crimson either. Nevertheless, upon my liberation, something red did film a yes a yet phasey field of view. And I thought to myself, ah, the amazing Ninetales is arrayed in a cape of red. So you mistook that red something for his cape, huh? Apparently so, and remember it now brings a great sadness upon me. So the red something probably wasn't the cape after all. Maybe that great sadness he mentioned was interfering with his memory. Well, he would have seen the fox chamber behind the amazing nine tails. What object could he have seen there that would have been that shocking? Hmm. I know. Could it have been? Then what? Dang it, I hate it when games do this. They're like, oh, could have been this. And then they're like, what? And then they say, oh, you got to figure it out. Mr. Bear, was this the red thing you saw? What was the red thing? Um. What was the red thing? Adjectives are important. Set up before in uh, Ace Attorney games, adjectives are important. Don't see anything red there, do you? No. It's the green thing. Could have been bloody, but no, it's not filthy red there. Right there. Whoa, is this the red thing you saw? What's red? After calling the police, and they pass each other that bend in a hall made for a foyer. Just carrying a staff like a moment and jingled. We couldn't call for help because there's no one else in the hall. We just showed this picture. That can't be it. It's not the mask. Photo of the fox chamber. Is there anything red here? Besides blood. I see blood everywhere. But I don't see anything that's red. Apart from the blood. She's not the only one knows what the original looked like. Statue of Teresa of Blood from Defendant to Matara was apparently wrapped in a large cloth on which the defendant's blood was also found. A large cloth on which it could have been a bloody cloth? Take that! Foolish mortal, do you mock me? Whoa, sorry. I'm afraid I have no recollection of seeing such an item. You must cease this practice of leaping before you're looking. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, so that was human demon double punch. Paolo, think of something that's red and give a feeling of sadness. And take a good look at the evidence again. Mr. Mayor, what's the red thing? What was the red thing? It's not any of these. They're not red. Unless this is red hair color. Take that! Nope, that's not it either. Now, it is nice because I'm not losing any HP from this. So, eventually, I'm going to brute force my way through it. But... That's red and can produce a feeling of sadness. Okay, I'm starting to think that the sadness is his friend dead. Therefore, it's all the blood. Which means the actual photo of... I mean, there's blood here everywhere and it's red. This is the only red thing I see besides this. And I've already done this. So there's nothing else that's red in my inventory except the photo of the blood. I... You know what? We can brute force our way through this eventually, so... 
Ah, yes, okay, good. I guess that works? I don't know how I feel about that one. Something red that could produce a deep sadness. Could it be, Mr. Tenma, that what you saw was the Alderman's blood? Blood? Why, yes, it was blood. Now that's a little, I don't know. That one's a little bit of a stretch. It's like, come on. Arrgh! Oh, ah! It's all coming back to me now. <clears throat> it wasn't a red cape that I saw. It was lying behind that amazing nine tails, the ultimate bloody body. Oh, 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 oh. Eek! Oh, that's important. No, that's important. Okay, okay, that explains the red cape now. Okay, I see it here. But more importantly, that means that someone else dressed up in Alderman's mask. That's not the Alderman who opened the door. That's LaBelle. Yeah, that has to be LaBelle. Bye-bye. His noise level is come down to zero. I think he's remembered everything now. Does this mean the Amazing Nine Tails killed Alderman Kibi? But the Alderman was the Amazing Nine Tails, so how exactly would that work? Hey, I asked you first. Well, Mr. Justice, you sure know how to make a complicated matter even more complicated. Yeah, I know I'm good at that. True, but at the time of the crime, our client was in the Forbidden Chamber. Moreover, Silence. Almost forgot you were here. That whole scene took a while. Boy, don't you think this is strange? The little scamp has already confirmed her father to be in the fox chamber. But she said not about seeing the amazing nine tails there. Ah, you just had to bring that up, didn't you? Trixie didn't see the belt there either. It's so weird. Who really was in that room then? Would the defense care to share any theories with the court? Can you explain the inconsistency between the defendant's testimony and his daughter's? Um, no, uh, not right now. I need more evidence. Or do I already have the evidence? I, I, I don't know how to explain it right now. Explain like something like that would be completely possible. Okay. My color here is going to explain it, so it's crystal clear. I am? Thanks! Yeah, I am! I like how the protagonists are on the same page. Even if you can't explain it, you can let them know that. You can't let them know that. Just make something up. I don't hear you helping. <laughs> now, with more of your bluffs and fairy tales, I trust. Fair warning, Justice Dono. I shall have your head if you fail to explain this. E what about a good old-fashioned penalty? Well, Mr. Justice, let's see if you have a head worth keeping on your shoulders. But why are you antagonizing him? First of all, Miss LaBelle was definitely in the Fox Chamber while it was locked. We also know that Mayor Temple was in the Forbidden Chamber based on his testimony. These two facts are crucial to my explanation. So let us consider the following question. If the, if the facts point to Flint LaBelle and the victim being there at the scene, why did Jixi Temma see the victim and her father, Mayor Temma? Hmm, a very good question indeed. I suppose you have an answer for us. Uh, sadly, you would be supposing wrong. Um, you think she could have mistaken the bell for the ma? Well, if she did, then the question is, why did she do that? Well, how about that ju explanation, Mr. Justice? I believe the time for questions is over. The defense asserts that the filet in the bell was at the scene of the crime. However, Jixi Tim has testified that she saw her father collapse there. She has, in fact, misremembered the event, but could made it do so. Jixi was confused. Jixi was disguised as... I mean, LaBelle was disguised as Tenma. I did say LaBelle was disguised as... As, um, the Alderman. So, he couldn't be disguised as both, right? She got the rooms mixed. Ah, that's not makes sense. I 
I don't see how either one of these makes sense. There is no way she could have gotten the rooms mixed up. But if you just say she's confused, that's not evidence. Jinxie testified said so that she saw her father collapse it. So it's not about the the rooms being messed up. The only logical explanation is that LaBelle was disguised as Tema, but LaBelle couldn't have been disguised as Tema. LaBelle was disguised as the Alderman. But could he have done both? Could he have disguised himself as Damien Tema and then disguised himself? Or what if he disguised himself as the Alderman first? And then disguise himself as Damien Tema, or disguise himself as Damien Tema, and then the ultimate. Uh, do we know that this clown prince is good at disguising himself? Have we had any evidence to support that claim? I mean, he has something that allows him to change his hair color, but that's not a disguise kit. I don't know, this, this, this entire section here is not hitting me as logical. But I don't know the answers yet. I think this is throwing her under the bus. There's no way this is correct. There's no way she got the room mixed up. So the only other answer is he disguised himself as both the ultimate and Tenma. But again, I don't know if we have any evidence that he's a good disguiser beyond just the ability to change his hair color. The figure Miss Tenma saw was not her father. It was Flint the Bell disguised as a Damien Tenma. Silence. That is a complete impossibility. Their faces are utterly unlike. How could you explain that away with a mere disguise? Yes, uh, they still do have incredibly indistinctive faces. Well, he does have the covering on him. But maybe the disguise completely hid his face? I think Jixie would have mentioned it if she couldn't see her father's face. And if it was, that's what a disguise. When did she have removed it? Oh, right. Your sword is as dull as your mind, Justice Dono. Shall I show you what a truly sharp blade is capable of? Ha ha ha. I had to go BASS! Ah! Are we dead? Huh. Are you okay, Apollo? I'm... I'm, uh, not fine, am I? Well, now that we have that little fairy tale out of the way, your baldness, your verdict, if you will. This seems like a really long fail state here. So I must have got that right, but the question is why, or how. Mr. Justice, I believe it's time for a verdict if you had no further arguments. Uh, what's even left for me to do? Apollo, remember what Mr. Wright always says. When you're stuck in a tight spot, turn the case upside down. Turn the case upside down? Hmm. He does say that, doesn't he? But I don't quite see how it applies here. Still, never hurts to give it a try, I guess. Let's see. Rather than Jixie didn't remove the disguise, maybe she couldn't remove it. And rather than she didn't tell anyone about the disguise, maybe it was she couldn't talk about it. A restless mask is more precious than his own life. He never unmasked himself in front of others. But there are matches where wrestlers battle for the right to remove each other's mask. To have your mask torn off is the worst humiliation a wrestler could suffer. That's why the masks are more important to them than life itself. And what about the fact that it was the Amazing Ninetales who opened the door? A mask that can't be removed in front of others? Can these facts turn things around? Ah! Ah! 
We, we got it all backwards. Uh, Apollo. I think, I, I think we might have made a huge mistake. What? Your baldness. I see no need to further indulge them in this silly, that silly little farce. The defense has no proof. They never did it, and they never will. Wait, are we saying that the Maze of Nine Tails is actually Damien Taro? Objection. Well, then I must announce. I do have proof. Ah, to you now. All right, but this better be good, Mr. Justice. We can solve the remaining riddles by turning all of our assumptions upside down. Why Jason Tenma mistook Miss LaBelle for her father. Why she couldn't remove the costume or tell anyone about it in the first place. These riddles are extremely linked to Mayor Tenma's secret identity. Yeah! Yeah, that makes that makes a lot more sense. Instead of disguising himself as Damien Taro, he just continued to wear the mask and Jinxie thought he was his father. Because he had the mask on, and she couldn't remove the mask because it's forbidden to remove the mask. I, I kind of understand where this is going now. It's not that he's a great disguise person, it's just the mask threw everyone off. It's kind of like Batman, or Superman. Superman. It's kind of like Superman with glasses. You know, no one realized that he's Superman without glasses, even though it's kind of obvious that he's Superman without glasses, right? A shocking secret identity that will turn the entire premise of this case upside down. This piece of evidence clearly reveals Mary Tempest secret identity. It's a mask, isn't it? Take that! Gah! What absolute clap trap! Puppycock and balderdash! We thought the alderman was the maze nine tails and the mayor was Temataro. That's why we believe the mayor killed the alderman in the in his lust for a nine tails veil. And it was the basis for the prosecution's entire case against her client. However, we got the whole thing backwards. Mayor Temo wasn't Temetar at all. He was the Maze of Nine Tails. That's quite a shock, really. I did not see it all coming. Who was this? You, you best explain yourself, Justice Dono. And from where you derive such a far-fetched conclusion? Jinxie no doubt knew the true identity of the Maze of Nine Tails, but she couldn't tell anyone no matter what. That's why she didn't say it was the Maze of Nine Tails she saw passed out. Even though unbeknownst to her, it was really Fluent LaBelle in disguise. Silence. The accusing and the deceitful dandy are utterly dismal, dissimilar in physical build and voice. That little scamp would have seen the difference. That's a good point. Objection. Remember, Miss LaBelle has his very own brand of cosmetics. Why could he fake a different build, too? And anyone speaking through a mask would naturally sound different. Silence. Really? Oh. Why did she not simply pull the mask off? Objection. Well, you don't do that. That's dishonorable. A masked wrestler in is more precious than life itself. As a huge fan of the Amazing Nine Tales, she would never dare unmask him. Gah! This case of mistaken identity also explains the riddle of the locked room. Well then by all means, Mr. Justice, answer for us already. First, first, Mr. LaBelle entered the room where the mayor and alderman were talking. I suspect he brought with him coffee laced with some sort of sedative. Once the alderman was out cold. Wow, look at that picture. That's when Mr. LaBelle killed him. Next, he took the mayor, who he had also drugged, into the Forbidden Chamber. Then he returned to the Fox Chamber, slipped into some of the mayor's spare clothes, and completed his disguise by donning the Maze Nine Tails mask. With his entire charade in place, Miss LaBelle then let out a scream. The scream that led Jixi Tema to the scene. Ah, so then... The person who said I killed Adam and Kirby was. Yep, that was Flint LaBelle in disguise. The mayor never actually confessed. Silence. Hmm, this is no more than guesswork and speculation. Now stop your jabbering and. Objection! No, you twisted samurai. This time, you stop your jabbering and let me finish with my case! Ah! 
Berg! That's right. Prepare for justice. Once Miss Tema left the scene. Miss Bell, still wearing the male's clothes and mask, opened the forbidden chamber. So he could drag the mayor back into the fox chamber. Oh, so the missing night tells tell the mayor saw us. Right, it was LaBelle opening the forbidden chamber. The second time Miss LaBelle opened the door to the forbidden chamber. He happened to catch the thieving Mr. Felch by surprise. Startled, Mr. Felch in his Tematara disguise ran as fast as he could away from the room. And as he did, he left behind a trail of feathers and tracks. And gave Miss Tema the scare of her life in the hallway. With well, no one left to witness the events that had occurred, Mr. Bell then proceeded to drag the sleeping mare back into the fox chamber. I see, Will. And it certainly does make sense. Then, after dragging the mare back into the fox chamber, Miss LaBelle threw the mask out the window and fled from the room. Silence! For this absurd theory to work, it requires that the defendant be the amazing nine tails. However, he was the one pushing for the municipal merger. That such an individual could possibly be the amazing nine tails is preposterous. Objection! The mayor was blackmailed into pursuing the merger. Miss Tema's life would have been in danger if he had openly voiced his opposition. That's why he created his secret identity as the amazing nine tails. This is madness. No one could possibly hatch such an insane plot. No one except a killer as insane as his plot, and I say Florent LaBelle more than qualifies. Foolish mortal. It is at your own peril that you forget who I am. Mayor Temma, it's okay now. Jixi will be safe just as soon as Mr. LaBelle is arrested. You are the amazing fight nine tails, aren't you? I I perm. Huh? Is this LaBelle? Yep. Come the fox to the trap. <laughs> you have quite the active imagination. Martenma is not the amazing on tails. Objection! What do you mean? Well, has the mayor admitted to it yet? But that's just... And even if he did admit to such nonsense, uh, I will reveal the truth behind Tematoro by terror and now. Wait, what? Why you? You would reveal, you would dare reveal the secret. It's weird how they're both sitting in the same like, spot at the same time. This, this is kind of weird, but oh, it's okay. <laughs> My good friend, the Alderman, told me all about it. But it wouldn't be good to expose her the truth. But with the superstitions, now would it? The truth behind Tower? What are you talking about? So go ahead, sigh it. Say, I am the Amazon and Hells. I die, you. Erg. Objection. Wait. Will somebody please explain what the heck is going on here? Mayor Tenma will do anything to keep the tooth behind Timotaro with a secret. A dark and terrible truth. That has been kept secret by the village superstitions. And if the mayor admits to being the maze of nine tails, you'll expose the truth? Right. I won't have him waking up fucking free because it's some nonsense you made up. Um, so what now, Justice Don't Know? Without the mayor's admission, your theory is as useless as you are in battle. I'll show you who's useless. Apollo, don't you dare give up now. Uh, I know, I know. Your Honor, I believe Mr. LaBelle's statements warrant a thorough cross-examination. 
After all, the true identity the Maze Knight tells is a cornerstone of this case. Hmm, you do have a point there. Well, please answer this court, Mr. LaBelle. Is it offended the Amazing Nine Tales or not? Witness testimony, the Amazing Nine Tales True Identity. The Amazing Nine Tales True Identity is not Mr. Tinma. The Ma would never admit to such utter nonsense. Uh, but if you did admit to such nonsense, I will expose uh, the truth behind Timotaro right here and now. And that would bring ruin upon Ninetales Vale, just as the superstitions say. Talk about out of the pot and into the fire. At this rate, the mayor will be found guilty for sure. Honestly speaking, Mayor Damon Timma is not the missing nine tails. I'm afraid I don't see how the defense is much of a case here. <laughs> and let's just leave it at that, shall we? We all know that Adam and Kilby was the amazing nine tails anyway. I mean, that's how the nine tails veil made it come back. The Ottoman was so popular. There's gotta be a hole in that testimony somewhere. But I don't even know where to start. Since we don't have any proof that the mayor is a Maisie Ninetales, then we'll just have to get him to admit it himself. But if he admits it, LaBelle's going to expose the secret behind Tamataro. Arg, we're so close, I know it. Advance me, cross examine the witness. Cross examination. The Amazing Nine Tales to a Nanny. The Amazing Nine Tales to Identity is not mere Tinma. This whole case only makes sense if the mayor is the Amazing Nine Tales. I know you use this mask to create the illusion of a locked room murder. Nothing more than idle speculation. You know the evidence now, have you? Objection! Mr. LaBelle knows what this statue originally looked like. That means he had to be in the fox chamber while it was still locked tight. <laughs> Sorry, but I heard about the statue from Ademin Kilbe. If you don't believe me, just ask him. Oh, but what's that? The Alderman's dead! <laughs> Looks like the joke's on you, my spetty little friend. Apollo, mind if I bring his neck? Wait in line, because I'm going first. Temper, temper, anyway. Oh, the mayor would never admit to such utter nonsense. Uh, the only nonsense here in this court is you and your assertions. Tis tis, such anger is terrible for the skin, you know. Beauty is like a flower that blooms forth from a serene heart. Excuse me? Piffed, I wouldn't expect a built-in paysan to like you to understand. Perhaps this fragrance will help the blossom with the new bloom. Ack! <laughs> you like that, don't you? Enough jabbering about blossoms and whatnot. Get done with your testimony before I slice you into a bouquet of cut flowers. Oh dear, please, excuse me. As I was saying, the assertion of a filthy Tani here is all the nonsense. But if he did admit to such nonsense, you'd be arrested, wouldn't you? Oh yes, it's true. I would be sacrificed upon the altar of justice 
despite my innocence. But what a terrible loss that would be for the future of humankind's cosmetic needs. It is a tragedy that must be averted. Defend me if you do not understand this, or if you do understand this, defend me nonetheless. Silence. Ah, the only terrible loss is time wasted by your ceaseless yammering. If you would avert the just tragedy awaiting you, and that vexing visage of yours, then... Yes, yes, I know. Get on with my testimony. Any way suffice to say. Should the Ma admit to the defense's nonsense, I will make good on my threat and... I will expose the truth behind Tembetaro right here and now. And how did you just learn of this so-called truth behind Tembetaro? Ademir Kyube told me all about it. The secret of the forbidden chamba and the truth behind Tembetaro. Why would he share secrets like that with you, Mr. LaBelle? Because of the Ottoman's wife, I was looking after her while she was hospitalized. He appreciated so much he shared his secrets with me. Wait, did he threaten the Ottoman in addition to the mayor? Uh, don't tell me that's how he learned how to open the forbidden chamber. Needless to say, I'm not above revealing the truth behind Timotaro. And that would be ruin upon Ninetales Vale, just as the superstition say. Do not gaze upon Tamataro. Do not tell others if you see him. That is what the superstition say. Exactly. Telling others what Timotaro looks like would reveal the truth. That's why the superstitions were written down in the first place. Uh, and ruin coming to the village if you free him. Is that a warning not to expose the truth? <laughs> oh, bingo! And that truth is Timotaro is a great, great, inspiring fortuna. That's what the Vobatil over Nine Tales Vale is all about. Uh, Tamatar is a great fortune? Come to think of it. <laughs> Only that's the greatest get rich quick sense in the universe. Grandpappy told me all about it, so there's amazing treasure in there. Could Tamatar actually be? Maritenma with the Forbidden Chamber Treasure. Well, we know it's not Maritenma, so it's got to be the Forbidden tra Treasure. Especially since they just allude that with Filch. Telling the vi villagers that Tembatar is a terrifying yokai is what has scared them away from the Forbidden Chamber and the treasure within. Well, that's how the treasure has been kept secret all this time. <laughs> Well, it seems our ace attorney here has uncovered the truth that must not be revealed. Mertema looks like he wants to keep the truth hidden as much as I do. Tragedy is doomed to repeat itself as long as Tembetaro would exist. That's why the secret must be protected. Huh. As long as Tembetaro exists, huh? Mr. LaBelle, please add that statement to your testimony. Tragedy is too mad to repeat as long as Tembetaro exists. Hold it. So in other words, tragedy wouldn't occur at all if there were no Tembetaro. Yes, I suppose it's so, but that's wishful. Yes, this is LaBelle. Mm, yes, mm, um, you don't sigh. Huh. As long as Tematar exists, huh? How's the mayor supposed to admit to a secret identity now? 
Well, we had to find a way to make them say it or our entire case unravels. There must be a hole in the Bell's testimony somewhere. Okay, so the hole obviously has to be the fifth response, right? Because we opened up this response. Although that doesn't mean necessarily true. That's not necessarily true, but it's usually true? Usually true, right? Tragedy is doomed to repeat as long as time exists. Some words tragedy wouldn't occur at all if there were no Tematao. Tragedy is doomed to repeat. But his his words here just throw me off. So in other words, tragedy wouldn't occur if there were no Tematao. Yes, it's supposed to be that's wishful thinking. Tragedy is doomed to repeat. As long as he does exist. I don't know, it's the way that's worded is throwing me off a lot. Like, a lot. Tragedy is doomed to repeat as long as he exists. So as long as Tematari exists, bad things happen. Because Tematar is a representation of evil. But is that true? Like, are we painting Tematar in the wrong picture here? Because didn't this cup thing basically say... Do we have a picture of the actual cup? It doesn't say it here that they're both lifting up the cup. <sighs> yeah, it doesn't say that this is true. Let's look through all the evidence. Uh, Soul Doc mentioned what Temato like. It seems those who few foolishly choose to depict the demon are cursed. Pretty sure it has nothing to do with the newspaper, because that's all about. We've already solved that. We've already. This has nothing to do with anything either. This could show that they're in unity. They're not necessarily fighting, they're working together. That. We've already. No, I don't, I don't think this shows anything either. There's something important about white hair being inside. Um, we just showed this earlier. A reference to the cape. This is about calling for help. It doesn't show anything there. Stab with the spear. Uh, only one of its kind. And then we had the color me Belle, which is his air color. A uh, figure discovered inside Tematar's statue. Apparently, something a certain thief leaves at the scene of a death. Tragedy is. That is not Mayor Tenma. The mayor would never admit to such utter nonsense. If he did. I'll expose the truth. And that would bring ruin upon Ninetales Veil. Vale. Tragedy is doomed to repeat as long as Tematar exists. Hold it. Let me read this again. Tragedy wouldn't occur at all if there were no Tematar. That's wishful. And then we get cut off here. As long as Tematar exists. What is the trick here? We don't have any proof of this. 
Never admit such nonsense. I will expose the truth. And now we're being ruined. Tragedy is doomed to repeat. Doomed to repeat. As it's happened before. Maybe he's not talking about this. Maybe he's talking about this. Because it's something that's happened before. It's repeated. The fact is, there was a thief that broke in here. Okay, so I talked myself into two different ideas. Either one, it could be the Fox and Demon statue. Showing that, that they're working together. Or two, it's the Azuki Kozo because it has happened before where someone broke into the chamber. These are the only two things that are jumping out to me. So let me try this one first because this is the one that I felt more initially connected with. And then if it's not the second thing, we're just going to have to go through everything again because I don't see this anywhere. Objection! That same... Ah, uh, shoot. Kind of notice because the sound is stopped, but you also notice when he says something like that. Huh. I object to you on personal grounds. The sole contradiction lies in what your faulty logic trapped up just now. Ack! Objection no rule. Depends will think twice what makes such erroneous statements. Seems that statement didn't particularly conflict with the evidence. Okay, let me try the, uh, the Azuzo Azuzo statue. Uh, Azuki Kozo figure. Objection! Ah, yes! Music stopped! Woohoo! Mr. LaBelle, what if Tematara no longer existed? Revealing the truth would no longer be an issue now, would it? If Tematara no longer exists, did. <laughs> what on earth are you talking about? Oh, apparently you haven't heard. Tematara no longer exists. But I guess you didn't get to do a thorough search after the key was taken from you. Because when we searched the Forbidden Chamber, there wasn't any stranger there. Really? Well, maybe you find looking in the right place. Sorry, but I have proof that Tamatara no longer exists. Take a look at this figure. Uh, what do we have here? It looks like some sort of creature. We found this in the Forbidden Chamber. It's an Izuki Kozo figure. The great thief, Azuki Kozo, used to lead them at the scene of his crimes. Are you suggesting that that Tenmataro has been stolen? Yep, Phineas Filch's grandfather. A master thief was a culprit. Okay, apparently I got the answer through not the right way. Because I heard the word repeat and I thought that he knew that it's been stolen. I guess he didn't know that's been stolen, but it's still, I mean, that's typical Ace Attorney, right? <laughs> and by that tedious, moronic car takers gone, father, no less. You? I? No! My, my beautiful golden grimmatown of ours! The great inspired by Tematara can no longer be ruined upon Nine Tail Vale. Is it that right? Mayor Tenma. The root of tragedy would indeed seem to be gone. In fact, I now recall the alderman revealing the secret to me on the day of our meeting. He must have been speaking of Tenma Taro. For he said to me, the gold ingot was gone. The golden ingot? You mean the treasure that is Tamataro's true form? Recall, if you will, the skull in the forbidden chamber. Tamataro is the yellowish object shown there. A giant gold ingot that my nomadic ancestors bestowed upon Nine Tails Vale. Oh, this thing. In return for that gold, my ancestor did receive from Nine Tails Vale. 
Land that would become Tenma Town. But why the villagers mad with greed did the great fortune. Bitter was the greed for battle. It was as if they were possessed. My ancestor's gold became as a curse upon the village, a curse of ruin. Thus it was that Yokai Tamato came to be. So, Tamato and the village superstitions were merely fairy tales to scare people away. Ha. Huh. Fairy tale or not, Tamato made quite the mess of things. Yes, indeed. For there is no greater monster than a mortal man's lust for gold. Well, you know what they say. The love of money is the root of all evil. My ancestors did bring a terrible thing here to Nine Tails Vale. A thing so terrible that... Tematado, a monster just as terrible, had to be created to keep it a secret. Yet we have naught but love for our little village to which we owe our very existence. Tenmetown would never seek to take over Ninetales Vale as a merger. Oh my, that's quite a shock and last in history. Mr. Mayor, now that we know Tenmetown no longer exists, are you ready to admit your secret? Or you are the amazing Ninetales, are you not? No, don't do it! Please, no! Be gone, you demented demon! Ahem. No, where was I? The Golden Lord of Yokai, the amazing Ninetales, is indeed Murr! Ha 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 ha. <laughs> and that means Jinxie. Yes. That man wearing the mayor's clothes. You saw collapse in the fox chamber. Was he wearing the amazing Nine Tails mask? Uh uh. That's what made me think it was Papa. He said he was going to reveal his secret identity to Adam McCubey that day, so... So it really was a papa that I saw there, was it? It was Fluent's idea from the start. He advised me to reveal my secret identity to the other man. Yeesh. Her Goldberg machines have less elaborate setups than the Bell scheme. You may rest easy now, little Jigsy, that monster's deception is through. Ka! Ka ka ka! The true facts behind this case have finally come to light. Mayor Tema did not kill Adam and Kiwi. But Florent LaBelle did. How dare you, you beast! Silencing us about. It's over. We've got him. Huh. Justice Dono. You should at least have a real blade in your hands if you desire to cross swords with me. Or have you mistaken this battlefield for a training ground? Huh? What's this guy want now? Evidence is like a razor sharp blade that cuts through bone as if it were butter. But you have only blind guesses, a dull blade capable, incapable of cutting even a cake. Oh, he has you there, Mr. Justice. As well, evidence is everything in a court of law. But, 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 but. They're right. Let's see some evidence. Of course, a perfect being like me, moi. Wouldn't leave any incriminating evidence behind. <laughs> this is the final battle. Just as a samurai must live and die by the sword. You will live or die by the evidence you hold. My swift blade of judgment, judgment awaits. Now, present your conclusive evidence, or do you have any? 
Oh, crud. Do I have anything cook? I, I mean, we come this far. We might as well... Might as well just bullet, I guess. Evidence? Oh, I have evidence. Do you do? Yeah, I mean, I would shoot. Uh, I didn't think I had anything before, but I guess we did. So in this case, we're just gonna have to go for it. Oh, of course. It's just a conclusive evidence we need to. I'm going to finally prove my time innocent. Here comes justice. Oh, look at this. Oh, look at this. Let's review the facts. It's like a denouement. Uh, denouement. Denouement. Yes, it's like a denouement from uh, uh, Master Detective Archives Rain Code, or before that, Dingamapa. The most damning evidence against the mayor was the crime scene itself. The mayor and the victim were the only two people found in the room. Also, we all thought that the ultimate was killed because he was a maze of nine tails. But as we know now, of course, we were way off. The maze of nine tails is really Mayor Damien Tenma. That's when his daughter, Jinxie, saw the maze of nine tails collapse at the scene. She mistook him for her father. Those are the facts we have revealed. However, LaBelle asserts that he did not leave any evidence at the scene of the crime. But he didn't say anything about evidence outside the crime scene. Maybe he isn't as clever as he think he is. Does any of the evidence found outside the crime scene provide any clues? Well, we found the hand cream inside the chamber. Uh, the Mason Ninetales mask was found on the river, so this is the only thing outside the crime scene. A clue inside the mask. Oh, I know, the Mason Ninetales mask. It was found washed up along the river. What sort of clue does mask hold? Um, patch gold fur or white hair? It had white hair inside. And what about the hair left in the mask? Who's it belong to? Well, we thought it belonged to Rex QB. Because he has white hair. But Florent Labelle can change his hair color. But do you think he did that? Do you think he had white hair at that time? I mean, if the evidence were to suggest it's Florent Labelle, then we would have to assume that the hair we found was not Rex Cubies, but Flint LaBelle. It's the only conclusive evidence we have. But this is a guess. We don't know what this conclusive evidence, but we do know that Flint LaBelle can change his hair color. So it's very possible that it, we are mistaken. It's not Rex Cubies hair, but it's actually Florence. The white hair is LaBelle's. All right, that hair is LaBelle's. Yes, that's not what I call, that, that's what I call conclusive evidence. Cool scene. Like I said, that was very much like a Dana Mon. It was pretty cool. Well, Mr. Justice, do you have any conclusive evidence to present to this court? Of course I do. Observe this mask, if you will. The mask? How is that conclusive evidence? It's not the mask itself, but the white hair inside it. We originally thought it belonged to Alderman Rex Kibbe. Yes, but the Maze Nine Tales, as we know now, is Mayor Tenma, so. Well, that is correct. So the question is, whose hair could this be? Oh wait, that's a good per that's a good point. Hold on, hold on, that's a good point. Um, that is a great point. I originally thought that the mask belonged to Rex Cuby. However, the mask actually belongs to Damien Temma. If the mask belonged to Damien Temma, it would be black hair inside the mask, not white. Since Rex Cuby is not the Amazing Nine Tails. There's no reason why we would find white hair inside the mask instead of a black hair. Because it should be Damien Tenma's hair that we found inside the mask. I understand that! That's brilliant! Wish I would have seen that earlier because it's kind of obvious now that I think about it. And the answer to that is the last person to have worn it before it was discarded. That would be you, Mr. Florent LaBelle. What oh, are you talking about? I never had ideas fight hair like that! It would appear your coup de grace failed to hit its mark. Coup de grace. Or the coup de gravy. Hey, hey. This freakish fop is not the white hair type. Because he's busy being one ludicrously garish color or another. Objection. No, prosecutor Blackwell. It is you who has made a fatal error. But what? Remember where this mask was found? It washed up on the side of the river. Oh, that's right. The water. It, it says here, um... 
washes out with water. Does that mean his hair is actually white? With that in mind. This last piece of evidence will solve all of the remaining riddles. Uh, last piece of, oh, 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 right. Uh, wash, I, I was just saying that, wash that with water. Yeah. Take that. Urgh, the dots. That's why I change the color of your hair so often. He actually has white hair. Hmm, what is that? This is Mr. LaBelle's own private brand of hair color. It washes out with the, just water. The court will also recall that the Maze Knight tells mask. Wash up along the side of the village river with white hair inside it. What's this? Are you saying that printing Peacock's hair color is... That's exactly what I'm saying. Mr. LaBelle's hair color is a freaky work of friction. But thanks to the river flowing through Ninetales Vale, we now have a real-life expose. The white hair in this mask is conclusive evidence proving that you're the real killer. A DNA test is all that we need to prove it, and we both know we'll get a match. Admit it! Flint LaBelle! You are the one who killed Alderman Rex QB! Love the pose. Oh, it's so good! You, you, you! How dare you! Oh, my puppet, my puppet, I'm gonna come at you like an alien! I couldn't keep up with him on that one. <sighs> gotcha. Hello, this is the bell, but the project is off. This is the bell. The sponsors have pulled out. LaBelle speaking, I'm fired, you mean I'm no longer met in my side. Hello, this is LaBelle, but there's a stratospheric damages claim against me. One hundred million dollars. I'm finished! My stop! Stick up fucking me, I'm done! <laughs> Ah, uh, this is preposterous. I, Simone Blackwell, defeated. Order, order, order. Order in the court. Well, this is quite the unexpected outcome. I must hand it to you, Mr. Justice. Really turn this case on its head, just like the other lawyer, Phoenix Wright. Ha ha ha. Wait, that was a compliment, right? <laughs> Plus, get a black quill. What have you done with Flint and the Bell? The defaced man has withered like a flower without water. One of the officers is currently tending to him with a sprinkler. <laughs> um, what did that just wash even more of his makeup off? Allow me to explain the actions of the guilty party in detail. The motive, of course, was to steal the gold ingot known as Temataro. <laughs> However, few are allowed into the manor due to its cultural ties to Ninetale Vale. LaBelle set to motion plans to gain access to the manor and the gold within via the merger. But the efforts of the Maze Ninetale saw those plans come to a halt. And thus, LaBelle murdered the Alderman and attempted to blame the blame on Mayor Tenma. I see, but I still can't come in is why would he go out to the gold in the first place? Miss LaBelle doesn't look like someone who's needed of financial aid. LaBelle hid his past well, much like he hid his beauty with makeup. He's mired in debt. Debt to, to pouring money into a brain only he could love. Which is why he sought the gold with such ferocity. Too bad for him. Someone else had gotten it first anyway. I see. Very well, then. I believe it's time I declare the verdict. This court finds defendant Damon Tema not guilty.
<laughs> He's like, whatever. Quit is adjourned. Woo! April 19th, 1.23 p.m. District Court. Defendant lobby number three. That was some seriously good lawyering, Apollo. Even I didn't see that coming. Haha, <laughs> just got lucky, I guess. You banished Hematara from Ninetales Vale like you were some kind of exorcist. Um, there's still one thing I don't understand. How come Mr. LaBelle didn't kill Mayor Tenma too? He could have set it up so that the murder mur mayor murdered the alderman that died from a counterattack. That would have removed at least one less possible fly from the ointment. I was wondering about that too. But I have a hunch LaBelle was biding his time. He was planning on exposing the Maze Nine Tails to identity himself. Huh? But why? Because the mayor was the Amazing Nine Tails. Had the bell succeeded in framing Mayor Tenma for the Alderman's murder, the wrestler's popularity would have plummeted once his identity was revealed. Oh, I get it. If the Amazing Nine Tails was just killed, he'd die a hero, but if it was proved a villain, his fans would abandon him, making the merger that much easier. Right, and then when the merger was complete and everything cooled down, He'd be able to search the Forbidden Chamber at his leisure. What an insanely intricate plot. Caw! Caw, 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 caw. A most excellent job clearing my name. A feat worthy of the Demon Lord's approval. Um, why are you acting like Time Tower again? Let this be of no concern to you. How could it not concern me? Tenma Tara, be gone! Gah! Jijigsy. Seems like ages since I laid eyes on you. Papa, you're finally back. Yes, it would seem Tenmato is no match for you. Ha ha ha. I'm not scared of that silly yokai anymore. Your father is a free man now, Jixi. Isn't that great? Thank you for all you've done. Seeing you guys in action, it... It made me feel like I don't have to be afraid anymore. Wait, is Jinxie actually smiling? Ah, This is all thanks to you too. Too bad the amazing Ninetales will have to retire though. Ah, How come? Once everyone hears I'm the amazing Ninetales, my fan base will nosedive. After all, I'm not the most popular of people. Another reason for my secret identity. I don't see how I could possibly continue. Hehe, <laughs> I think you've misjudged yourself. Take a look outside. Say, now that you mentioned it, what's all the noise out there? A big crowd gathered outside the courthouse once the news broke. Seems I want to get a glimpse of Mayor Damien Tema, the mayor behind the mask. And a route for your return to the wrestling ring. Rooting for me, but I thought I was nothing more than a malefactor in their eyes. The only one who really matters is Jinxie. Show her how cool you really are. Yeah, you're the coolest when you're out there fighting in the ring, Papa. Aww. Look at the smile, yeah. It's good to see her happy. Jinxie. Here, I think you'll be needing this. Uh, his mask, obviously. Right? Take that! Thank you. Now, if you would excuse me. Huh? I don't want to keep my fans waiting. <laughs> Nine tails fail forever. Nine tails, nine tails, nine tails. I sure hope they can settle the problems between Timber Town and the Ninetales Vale. Me too. I'm sure they'll be fine. After all, the blackmailer slash killer is behind bars and the merger is no longer an issue. Plus, the amazing Ninetales is obviously still a hit and I suspect Ninetales Vale will be too. And it's all, and it's all because we believed in our client. 
just like you said. Okay, people. Now that we got the one in the back. Go, let's go get something to eat. I'm starving. Sounds good. I've been so nervous I haven't eaten since yesterday. Better keep eating, Apollo. Or you might have to start looking up at me. Huh? I'm def- I'm definitely past my growth phase, and you should be about past yours, too. Are you kidding me? I'm just getting started. Ready or not, it's face stuffing time. Keep eating like that, and the only direction you'll go is sideways. Aw, oh, come on. Very funny. But I've got a hollow leg. I can eat as much as I want without getting an ints. Really? Wow, I can't wait to see this. Colors? Ha, huh. just let them try to stick to me. Alright, already you two. Let's get going before the old man closes shop. Eldoon's Noodles is it an all night stand, you know. Hey, it's Eldoon's Noodles! I'm with Mr. Wright. Let's go. I've been waiting to have a bowl from there ever since Mr. Wright told me about them. Well, what are we waiting for? The noodles are on meat today, so I expect some serious eating from you two. Yay! Thanks, boss! I won't let you down. Aldina has no idea what she's getting herself into. Miss Aldina's noodles are so high and salty. Two bowls would uh, kill a man. <laughs> that was our first kiss together. And it felt like nothing could bring us down after that. The dark age of the law seems so distant. So irrelevant to a small, cozy office. But little did I know that I have been looking all along, right there behind us. The first time it made itself known was during the murder at Damas Legal Academy. That case would mark the twilight before the dark, the cold night that was to come. What a picture. Damn, it looks amazing. Absolutely beautiful. The monster is turned about. All right. So, uh, thoughts before we adjourn for the day. It's already a long video. I've had to cut it a few times just because weather's been bad and I'm kind of not myself right now. But, but <clears throat> let's talk about the case. First off, really, really love the new prosecutor, Blackwell. Uh, he's amazing. He's great. The bird, Taka, just number one character in the entire game so far, bar none. Uh, e everything about those two was great. Jinxie. I have a problem with Jinxie. And that was that there was this time that we went and she was like acting as if she was possessed. But we're led to believe that she is really possessed. And that kind of, I don't know, that one, that scene kind of got me confused because the possession on Damien Tema was always just fake. So why was she possessed? Now, they tried to explain it like it was some sort of sleep condition. But at the same time, it just was a really weird scene that I don't think helped this case. It just made the case more confusing so to speak now if they and now if we find out that jinxie down the line has more of these possessions and this was foreshadowing future events i can be okay with that but i don't i don't think we'll see jinxie and time again i have a feeling like this case is going to be separate from all the others so i don't understand that scene and i think this case is hurt by that scene Another thing is uh, the whole fake possession thing. I don't know. I, I, I understand that he's doing it to protect his daughter. It just seemed a little bit weird. Instead of saying a little bit weird, it seemed a lot of bit weird. Like, you, he could have... I mean, the whole part where he's talking about the how he was inside the vault. And it was almost like being described in third person. It just, it just felt weird. Did it need to happen? No. I don't think it needed to happen. Uh, I, I understand how they were. I, I mean, there was a point when I said maybe he is actually possessed. But the whole possession thing just... I don't know if it worked the way they wanted it to work. 
I, I think that's a good way of saying it. Like, I understand why they did it. I understand why he did it. I understand it was protecting his daughter. But could he have protected his daughter by just saying, yeah, I did it? Did he need the fake possession thing? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but let's talk about the most, the biggest flaw in this case, in my mind, was the Jinxy slash Damien confession scene. So much has to be perfect for that scene to happen. I mean, the, uh, the, the fact that she comes in and she sees him hurt and she doesn't immediately like try to help him try to get bandages, uh, take off the mask, even though it's dishonorable, it doesn't matter. Your father could be dying there. Uh, you rip off that mask and you see to his wound. I mean, there's just so much luck has to go into that scene for it to work. In LaBelle's favor. Now, you could say, Flightless, this isn't luck. This just shows how awesome Florent is at being a mastermind. How well he knows the characters of Jinxie and Alderman and Damien. And how he's able to puppet master them all, including Filch. I mean, I haven't talked about Filch yet. But you could say that. This guy here is the, the, the best mastermind in Ace Attorney history. And I don't know if you're wrong. But if I had to put it to dumb luck and, and just really fortunate that she didn't figure it out versus he manipulated this all for it to happen just the way he wanted it to. I'm actually leaning more to it just being really, really, really big dumb luck. Yeah, um, I'm leaning more towards that way. So I think, I think that was the biggest flaw in the case. And yes, I know some people may say, well, hey, the biggest flaw in the case is we knew who the murderer was. Granted, I, I, I do think that that is a flaw, that we knew who the murderer was. But at the same time, we only had two possible suspects. It was either going to be Filch or it was going to be um, Florian. I mean, there's really not a lot of other people to suspect here. And it was kind of obvious that was going to be Florent. So the fact that they revealed who the killer was, I'm not in, looking back on it. I was bothered by it at the very beginning of the case, but I don't think I'm as bothered by it now. I, 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 I don't believe this case needed that mystery of who did it because it was kind of obvious who did it. Yeah. Um... Should they reveal who did it? No. It should be a mystery. Even if the mystery is obvious, you should still keep it a mystery. But I I'm not too put off by that. Um, I, I didn't really like Jinxie as a character too much. Her whole charm thing and all of that, it was... It, it was... I, I, I don't know. I, I just wasn't buying into it that much. And she was... It, it was kind of more annoying than anything else. Oh, you are the demon lawyer. It's like... Come on, you know, you know he's not a demon lawyer just because he has spiky hair. I mean, that's, I, I mean, what is she, like six years old? So, I'm not a big fan of Jinxie. And Athena, although she was introduced in this case, she was actually introduced in the previous case. So, Athena is still awesome. Uh, Apollo is still awesome. Uh, the uh, Black Quill is awesome. The Judge is awesome. The case itself wasn't that bad. I mean, except for the... The things I've talked about, the, the whole mystery behind how the case happened was pretty mind-blowing. I mean, the, the, the way everything was set up was set up really, really well. And hats off to uh, LaBelle uh, for being such a good manipulator. I, I, don't, I still don't buy him as being the master manipulator that I think they want to paint him as, but I can still buy him as being a very clever murderer. I I enjoy this case because I had a, there was a lot of fun to it. There were a lot of references I got. It's just a couple of things kind of pulled me off on. Did this really need to be here? I mean, could that have been cut? And yet the case still be just as good. I feel like yeah. So it's more of an editing issue and um, than a uh, than a uh, what's the words I'm looking for? Uh, 
a plot issue. Like you could have cut those things out and I don't think the case would have been harmed at all. Uh, I really like the fact that he had white hair at the end. It makes sense why he had all the colors. I love how LaBelle had a Joker costume on. I thought that was amazing and that was just the best. Uh, but yeah, I like Damien. I like the fact that he's willing to sacrifice himself for his daughter. I, I like the whole wrestling thing because I like wrestling. So overall, yeah, I mean, the, the case isn't bad. It's just there are, if this case was cut up a little, it could be better than what it was. I, I go back to the, the case that would never end. What was it? The third case in the first game, I think it was. It's like you had Kay Faraday introduced um, and you, you had some Easter eggs, uh, you know, with uh, Phoenix and company. Uh, you had Ema show up. I mean, there's so much that is really awesome about that case, but then it just kept going and going and going and it never ended. And if they would just edit it so that the third act didn't exist, it would have been a great case and maybe a top tier case. I feel the same way about this one. This one, it's more of an editing issue. If you just cut out a certain amount of things, the case still would have been great. And I mean, yeah, at the end of the day, if I can say, okay, well, I enjoy the story and I enjoy the plot. I was just, you know, I didn't, I, I just didn't like the filler, so to speak. Kind of like watching anime. I loved watching Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z is like 300 episodes when it really should be, what, 100? At most. But yeah, it's 300 episodes because it's got so much filler in it. But that doesn't mean I dislike the show. It just means I wish, I, I wish the filler wouldn't exist. So it's like whenever I watch Dragon Ball Z, I go watch Dragon Ball Z Kai. Although Kai stops before the last arc, which is a shame. But still, I'd rather watch Dragon Ball Z Kai than Dragon Ball Z. If anyone watches anime and gets those references, it's cool. You're awesome. But yeah, you're all awesome. Thank you so much for being here. I much appreciate you all. Uh, let me know your thoughts about this case below. I will, of course, work on a ranking video of all these cases. And then I'll see where this case fits. I still need to work on the ranking video for Ace Attorney Investigations. I plan on making that video come out. Uh, I'm trying to shoot for the release date of the uh, Ace Attorney Investigation remaster. Uh, because I think that would be really cool to release my thoughts of the case at that time. Uh, so look forward to that in the future if I can get it done. But yeah, I mean, I enjoyed this case. And I liked the whole... I liked the whole yokai stuff. I mean, I thought that was cool. Uh, very visual stuff. I mean, just the artwork of that first frame of going into the village. We have all these monsters everywhere. That was super duper cool. And it's not unbelievable to think that magic and stuff couldn't exist. Because we've already established that with the Megatama. And the, the spirits of previous games. And the whole Dahlia thing. I mean, it, it's not too unbelievable to think that this couldn't have happened. Uh, so, yeah, I like the case. I'm looking forward to the next one. Although the next one is not the next one. The next one's actually the DLC, I believe. Which is weird. They're, they're, they're like misordered in the remaster collection. So, I will be playing the DLC next. Let me know if I'm wrong about that. But I believe everyone told me the DLC comes after case two. Uh, so just verify with me. I appreciate that. Y'all are the number one YouTube community, all YouTube. I can't thank you enough for everything. But until next time, I hope you have a wonderful, fantastic, amazing, awesome day. So long and take care. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to comment on what you saw and what you'd like to see next. I always love to hear your thoughts. But before we go, please remember that you matter and you are brilliant and you are loved. And you should always be true to yourself. Never let the world tell you any different. Much love to you from your friendly, feathered, flightless bird.